Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much to all of those of you joining us here at Earth and Sky and those of you joining us online. We really appreciate you. We love each and every one of your likes, your views, your comments. It all means a lot to us. Today, I wanted to talk about joy because it happens to be my birthday tomorrow. And so it got me thinking about what kind of topic I'd like to talk about. And joy popped into my head. So I hope all of you are able to experience that feeling of joy in your life. We have such a wide range of emotions that we experience in life and I wanted to talk a little bit about joy somewhat from the numerology standpoint. I've been teaching a numerology class for a couple of years now. We had the basics class which lasted almost a year and now we're going into a really in-depth class. It's about the Kabbalah so I'm teaching the tree of life and how numerology, tarot, and astrology all combine in to this tree of life as well as all the aspects that it affects in day-to-day -day life. We might be doing some more uh, life talks on some of the sphero or some of the paths of the tree of life at some point in the future but it really got me thinking as I was thinking about what is joy? How can you have joy in your life? Do you feel like you're kind of mired in some of the like lower vibration feelings? Maybe you feel a little bit depressed or just a little bit sad. Sometimes it's normal to go through all of these emotions. If we were always every single day feeling joy, you wouldn't be able to recognize what joy felt like because that would just be your baseline. So it's important sometimes to kind of step back in your life and look and see what is your baseline. Do you really like what's going on in your life? Do you have an appreciation for the things that are in your life? Or do you sometimes forget about those good things because you're just seeking something a little higher, a little more, you want that little bit of extra sizzle in your life? It's, there's no problem with having that, but have gratitude for what you do have in your life in the process. So if you look up the definition of joy, it's basically a feeling of great pleasure or happiness. Pretty easy to understand that. The word joy has been used for hundreds of years, actually. It has really old roots. It was used in the 1800s about twice as frequently as it's used in modern day. I think we use the term happiness a bit more now than we use the term joy. But for place of ease in this life talk, I wanted to choose the word that has three letters since we're going into the numerology aspect of how to have joy in your life. What is joy? Does it feel like it might be out of reach sometimes? We've already done a lot of life talks on how to bring happiness into your life. We've talked about laughing every day or if you feel like you have nothing to laugh about, then just faking it and laughing and then that will incite those chemistries within yourself. But you can watch those other life talks to learn some of those pointers. Today, I wanted to get into the numerology aspect. So if you're not familiar, every single letter in the alphabet has a number value that goes with it. And those numbers range from one through nine. You can watch our previous life talk on the basic numerology starting points um, that we did uh, several months ago where I went over the definitions of the one through nine numbers. And there's master numbers, which are the double digit numbers like 11, 22, 33. It goes all the way up to 99 with different definitions of what those are. Those are really great numbers to have in your life. And then there's something called karmic numbers. Numbers. So numbers like 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. Kind of hard to figure out necessarily why those numbers are the specific karmic numbers, but there is some reason behind it. But we are going to talk a little bit about the karmic number 14 after we go into what each of the letters are for the word joy and how numerology really has such a foundation in everyday life. I know that um, Tesla had talked about it. Einstein had talked about it. Hippocrates is a, a huge founder. Pythagoras had a huge, or Pythagoras had a huge founding on uh, the foundation of numerology and how we can bring that into our life. So the letter J has the numerology value of the number one to it. So if you're looking at just the very start of the word joy or my husband, JJ, <laughs> it will represent somebody who is a leader. The number one is a very enthusiastic number. It's an individual number. So it's somebody who feels that where they can lead, they have the confidence to kind of go forth and they um, have individual 
individualistic ideas too. They can be very innovative people a lot of times. And if you think about joy, when you're starting to feel joy in your life, it's a, an energy that kind of can just march right in and you, could, you feel happy. You recognize it when you feel joy. It has that burst of energy feeling that comes forth with the one. It's no, no um, coincidence that that's the first number in the letter of joy it would be the one because it kind of marches and it has that enthusiasm that goes with the number one and then the letter o is the relates to the number six so sixes are the number of nurturing family responsibility and it really made a lot of sense to me when I was thinking about that because there's a responsibility that comes with owning what your feelings are and with being in charge of bringing in the joy into your life. So it, again, there's no coincidence that the very middle letter of the word joy correlates to a definition that means being responsible. It's also a very nurturing number. So when you feel nurtured or when you're nurturing other people, it can bring out that really positive feeling of joy. Sometimes it's taking that initiative and going out and seeing what you want to bring in that will make you feel nurtured in life too. We all have to be responsible for our own emotions. Nobody else can hold the true power over what you're feeling. Sometimes it might feel like someone just made you feel this way or their actions made you feel that way or because they did this, they made you feel that. That's actually not true. And if you feel that, then you're giving away your power to them. Instead, pull your power back. Use that enthusiastic one in uh, definition, that enthusiasm and the leadership of the one that joy starts with to pull back the joy, to pull back that responsibility into your life, leading you into the middle of the letter of the word one. And family, so the family is a big part of six. Sometimes families are biological family. Sometimes family is what you choose to make your family. So it's really up to you, but there is a significance that that's in the middle of the word joy. Sometimes people feel like they can kind of touch into joy, but then they lose it really quickly to circumstances or people or whatever's going on around them. But it's your responsibility to maintain that. It's your responsibility to recognize what makes you feel joyful and to make it happen within your life. And then the last letter of the word joy is Y. And so that number correlates to the number seven. And I really love this because the number seven is a very spiritual number. It's the number of awakening, enlightenment, realization. It's a metaphysical power number. It's a connection to the spiritual realms. And so it's almost as though if you combine those into that little joyful sandwich, you're bringing in the enthusiasm the energy, that leadership, taking charge of what you're going to be feeling, taking charge of recognizing what you have to be grateful for in life, taking the responsibility, moving into the middle of the word, nurturing yourself. Often when you nurture other people, you're going to feel joy because you're going to see the joy that happens in those people's lives as you nurture them and you share that love with other people. Nurturing joy, feeling family responsibility, all leading into this spiritual enlightenment, the mystical number. The number seven is where we have awakenings. We have those thoughts that come in that help you realize there's something more to life than just what is here in the physical of this plane here. And so it's as though when you take that, you bring all of that energy in together and you have that seven, it's like it, you get these awakenings. Sometimes we get those awakenings or those aha moments and it really sparks that joy within us. Or you might be in that enthusiastic state of joy when you realize those awakenings. But as you bring those together, I just find it very interesting that each of those letters is what spells out joy. And then in numerology, we always add the values of the numbers together too. So you would add 
the J, which is the one, the O, which is the six, and the Y, which is the seven, and that makes the number 14. So 14 is a karmic number, which we talked about in the beginning. So karmic numbers always have a little bit of a lesson to teach you. It's not that it's a bad number. Don't be afraid of it just because it's a karmic number. It just has something to teach you within it. And that's kind of how life is in general. So we have these lessons to learn. So the number 14, which the one plus six plus seven equals 14, that correlates to an abuse of freedom. So when it's a karmic number within your life, say this was in your numerology chart, if you were having me do a full chart for you and that came up, it would be indicating that in the past, likely a past life, if you believe in past lives, um, it would be that there was an abuse of freedom. So maybe you were taking too much of your time or you were kind of shirking your responsibilities for the things that were pleasurable and really choosing to ignore the six, which is in the middle of the word joy. You were ignoring your responsibility. You were not being so nurturing. You were ignoring what you needed to do for your family and your friends. And so that would correlate to that abuse of freedom. So it's very interesting. We have all of these great definitions leading into the word joy and it's almost like it leads a little caution at the end of saying yes feel joyful you should have joy in your life but don't forsake the things that you need to do just in the pursuit of things that are always bringing joy because it's important to know that life is also work and it's truly a balance you want to find that balance in between seems like oftentimes people fall on one end or the other end. Either they become so focused on work they forget about joy, or they're so focused on the things that will be, bring pleasure to them that they forget to build their life and to create what they really want by putting in the work. So the word joy itself gives you that caution saying, don't abuse the freedom. Don't just specifically only seek joy out, but enjoy joy. Use your individualistic, your in enthusiasm, use your ideas, bring it together, own your responsibility, enjoy those aha moments, enjoy the pleasures that the spiritual realm can bring into your life and know that as you find this balance right in the middle, you're going to feel that pendulum of joy even more. You're going to be able to find the joy in the everyday because you're not shirking the responsibility. You're not abusing the freedom and just wanting to only feel the joy all the time, but you're finding your balance so you can be the absolute happiest where you can still enjoy and recognize all of those pleasures that come in within the day-to-day -day life. Now what we also continue to do with numerology is whether it's a karmic number or master number or whatever it is, we add those final numbers together to see what it really brings. So one plus four is going to bring up to be a five, obviously. And so you're good. That fives really focus on change, flexibility, and variety. And I think that's a big message that joy brings to us as a general too. Joy itself, as I talked about, it's this wave that you flow between, between working hard, enjoying the, the pleasurable aspects of life, and finding this balance of the wave that you flow back and forth in the middle all the time. But to have that joy, to maintain it all the time, it helps to have some flexibility in your life. It's about bringing in change because if things are always the same, it does get very boring. It does get very dull. You lose that luster of feeling that real essence of joy when things are new and exciting. And so it's like joy brings us this message of knowing change is okay. Don't be afraid of joy. You can or change. You can find joy in change. You can find that it's all about your mindset. So if things are changing in your life, I know there uh, I was talking to somebody a little while ago that they were changing her whole work setup. So everybody's offices were being moved. Some of them were being moved to a different building. People who were friends were being separated. And many of the people felt like it was such chaos and they didn't want to do it. There was so much change going on. But there were a couple of them that were embracing it saying, well, maybe I'll meet some new people that I'll really connect with. It doesn't mean I can't still go out and enjoy time with my other coworkers that I've really bonded with. Let's see where this takes us. And the word joy in its final definition, that number five, it really brings us to this place of recognizing that change is good 
flexibility is good. To embrace change means you need to be flexible within yourself, within your mind, within your heart, within your day-to-day -day life. Having that flexibility and enjoying variety. The more variety you have, the more variety of things you have to be joyful for. So I hope that helped you to just get another perspective on what joy is, how to enjoy the joyful things of life. Find ways that you can rejoice in the day today. Make that noun that is the word joy, turn it into an adverb in your life and really express joy, live joyfully, enjoy the day that is going on. I hope you've been having a fantastic weekend and enjoy your next week.